So I'm going to talk about the drivers and barriers of health information technology. There have been numerous studies um, conducted to hypothesize about the pros and cons of the adoption of HIT, and they mainly focus on healthcare professionals and patients. Um, both rely on HIT, and uh, the question at hand is really why are some healthcare professionals so hesitant while others um, urge diffusion right away? So, while given opinions and research, the adoption of HIT is affected by many drivers and barriers. Specifically to me, the drivers um, include um, the improvement of efficiency, quality, and safety in patient care and integrated delivery systems, while the barriers include um, cost and the complexity of transition. And as it is known, this generation involves an area, an era of technology. And with that being said, healthcare has the option to adopt all these new technologies. So by adopting these technologies, uh, patient care can progress, and healthcare professionals can allow for a more unified delivery system. Um, the Center for Studying Health System Change carried out a survey to physicians, and it was concluded that. 77% of physicians access the internet, 53% obtain information for treatment alternatives, 32% obtain information on formularies, and 11% use it to write prescriptions. So based on the survey, physicians definitely tend to use some of these technologies during their everyday routines already, and they obviously increase their productivity or else they wouldn't use it. So with that being said, it improves the patient's um, service, it's quicker, and hopefully since they're still using it, it's a better, efficient way um, for patient care. So if a patient is asked whether they would like their, this is just an example, if a patient is asked whether they would like their x-rays to be filmed um, and filed or digitalized and placed right in front of their face for them, I'm pretty sure most people would choose their um, x-rays to be digitalized and pop up right in front of their face. Instead of having someone um, go run to some, you know, warehouse where they store all these, uh, patient files and you know it can it can take weeks so um, that's definitely obvious improvement in quality of um, care will always be an objective um, and with that in mind when the levels of uncertainty increase during patient care then technology is definitely needed to do comparative analysis uh, with the simple adoption of HIT a physician is able to access patient records and to see the history and any results um, having a physician um, able to access the patient records and see their history and any other results, um, their diagnosis is correct um, and their treatment is necessary, uh, patients will understand that. And um, it is also very convenient for a patient to be able to track their own results online as they are being treated. According to um, the, Inst the Institute of Medicine, uh, in 2004 there were between 44,000 and 98,000 deaths due to um, medical errors and I really like this graph it kind of just shows you um, some statistics um, you know omission errors and um, you know giving the wrong patients medicine the wrong uh, time the wrong dose so I really like that I know that was in 2003 but it's just a really good example of you know the errors that can be made um, and um, it proves that medical errors are a real occurrence. So, you know, incorrect dosage and wrong time for medicine, those can all, um, you know, hopefully be changed by the use of technology. Um, HIT can also advance um, in, you know, safety and, you know, the, in the distribution of medicine and doses, um, you know, and while, you know, HIT can improve efficiency, quality, and safety, um, it can also um, improve an integrated delivery system. And what that means, it's kind of like joint efforts to function under one uh, cohesive structure. And that, um, it, the integration is being compelled uh, by the need to bring all the components of the delivery system together to create a single point of responsibility and accountability. So in brief, HIT is necessary in establishing a communication infrastructure as well as having the ability to see other patients um, you know, the if uh, a patient is seeing a doctor and then has to go to a specialist, the specialist can hopefully see the other physician's uh, comments and notes and any other medications that the patient is on. Um, so that's definitely a plus.
um, so that they're not, you know, diagnosing something that the primary care physician doesn't even think is going on. And um, both doctors can, um, you know, base medications that are given off of, you know, the medications that are already being prescribed so that they're not mixing things that shouldn't be mixed. Um, you know, while the adoption of HIT can enhance health care, the adoption it itself consists of barriers that hinder the decision of healthcare professionals as well. Um, two important barriers include expenditures and the complexity of transition. So first and foremost, in order to um, in order for healthcare professionals to begin, they have to think, you know, this adoption doesn't just take one day. Um, it can take years and years and years for the whole transition to actually take place. Um, so on top of hundreds of millions of dollars that cost to purchase and maintain all of these, um, you know, there has to be factored in um, that these technologies need assessments, uh, hardware, software, licenses, training, upgrades, maintenance, you know, information, technology support, interface, deployment. So that's definitely something that, you know, healthcare, staff, healthcare professionals really do take into consideration as well. Um, and so cost can definitely weigh heavily, um, but also the transition alone definitely breeds panic. Um, the barrier of a complicated changeover creates a whole other issue. Healthcare professionals will have to start over in terms of their routines and procedures along with their staff. So it's scary to think that if, you know, a nurse doesn't really understand how to use a certain technology that she may not be entering your information correctly and just a scary thought. Um, so you know, and then also new, new technologies are coming out all the time. So just when the staff thinks that they're finished learning a technology, they're pretty much just learning technologies on a continual basis because something new is going to come out eventually. Um, and then it's sad to think that, you know, the healthcare professionals are being taken away from their, their duties, taken away from their patients, so to say, um, in order to just, you know, be trained on these new technologies. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's really important to realize that the advancements in technology are accompanied with, you know, this growing array of new issues and unknowns defining the struggle of the adoption of HIT. Um, you know, and there's really no answer as to whether or not it really should be adopted or not. And I really did like this. Um, it really just shows the deadlock. And not necessarily just for EHRs, but for technology alone. Um, the providers can't afford it because the vendors have to, you know, up their prices so much because the demand for it is not very high. And then the payers and the purchasers, um, you know, won't provide incentives. So it's just kind of like a never winning circle. Um, and one of the three need to give in a little in order for the adoption of HIT to really take place. And that is you know, my thoughts and my summarization on the drivers and barriers of health information technology. Thank you.